Okay, so it's a great pleasure to have Lucas uh, this day from uh, Seattle. Uh, so, you know, Lucas is, of course, very famous for many things uh, related to topological uh, phases, uh, but of late he's also been interested in, uh, uh, in, in these uh, unitary operators, and uh, we had uh, some nice collaborations trying to classify uh, unitary operators in low dimensions, uh, and uh, but now he has some very nice results in three dimensions, uh, along with Matt Hastings and Jim Wan Ha, which he'll tell us about today. So. Okay, well, yeah, thanks, thanks, Ashwin, and thanks a lot for uh, the invitation to speak here. Um, can everybody hear me? Okay. So, right, so I'll be talking about some recent work with uh, Jim Wan Ha and Matt Hastings, at, uh, who are both at, at Microsoft Research. Um, uh, so my title is Non-Trivial Quantum Cellular Automata in Three Dimensions. Uh, cellular, quantum cellular automata is sort of a fancy name, but what it means is just a unitary operator that preserves locality. So I'll actually refer to it as locality preserving unitaries. And I'll, I'll, I'll define all these terms as I go on. Um, so let me, let me start with uh, a general uh, uh, plan of the talk, and then, um, you know, and, and, and then I'll give you some, some, some details and, and try to show you a lot of pictures. Um, so this talk is, is centered around um, uh, a specific three-dimensional lattice model. Uh, it's actually a class of models, but we'll be studying one particular example of these models, uh, the so-called Walker-Wong model, or Walker-Wong models. Um, and this is an interesting uh, class of models because they're sort of both boring and interesting at the same time. There, there, there's aspects of them that are boring, namely, you know, they... From the, if, you, if you write down a, 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 you know, a theory with a three-dimensional bulk with a surface, surface termination, um, you know, the most natural surface termination that you write down, and the most natural Hamiltonian uh, that you write down at the surface actually supports surface topological order. Okay? Um, uh, it's actually very hard to write down a, 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 a surface terminations or surface Hamiltonian dynamics for the surface, which... Which, which don't have some kind of a, a topological order. So that's kind of weird. Um, and the other thing that makes them interesting is that they support, you know, the three-dimensional models support natural implementations of symmetry, um, which, which, which makes uh, the 3D model now with the symmetry into a non-trivial SVT phase. Okay, so the symmetry protected topological phase. So, so there's, there's some sort of topology that's hidden even though there's no intrinsic topological order. And... Um, this has sort of been actually understood partly in, in, in the continuum picture. So in the, in the continuum picture, there's a, there's, a, there's a topological quantum field theory that, that people understand that describes uh, uh, the, the, the physics of these Walker-Wong models. And it's sort of, uh, things are understood on that level. And, uh, you know, the, 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 the sort of non-trivial thing about Walker-Wong models in this continuum description is just that this topological quantum field theory is sen sensitive to certain invariants of four-dimensional space-time, the so-called signature invariant, uh, and to nothing else. Um, and that's nice, but it's somehow not satisfying when you're thinking about lattice models, um, this kind of sort of continuum characterization, because, uh, you know, it's, it's hard to take a lattice model and put it on some complicated uh, uh, space-time space-time space -time manifold. That's at least not something of, you know, the form three-dimensional manifold cross, cross time. Uh, all these manifolds with non-trivial signature are, are sort of very complicated, like you know, CP2 or some, some, something like that. So, so, so somehow the continuum perspective is not, not very satisfying. And, and so the, the point of this talk is to really try to examine the, these Walker-Wong models from, from just a lattice perspective. Um, and basically the central theme that emerges um, is that these Walker-Wong models um, even though they're sort of boring in the, the sort of the, the world of all gapped Hamiltonians, you know, they don't have intrinsic topological order, they're somehow interesting in the world of commuting projector Hamiltonians. If you, if you restrict to commuting projector Hamiltonians, the, uh, these walk around models somehow give an interesting class of, class of models. They're somehow not continuously connected to a trivial model. Okay. Is this regardless of what topological order you have at the surface? Is it any walker wang model? No, no, sorry, sorry, yeah, so, 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 right, very, very good point. It, it, this is, this is only true for uh, uh, the specific, well, it, it'll certainly be true for the specific walker wang model, which I'm talking about, I'm going to talk about, which realizes uh, uh, surface topological, the three fermion surface topological order. Uh, uh, there are certainly sort of trivial walker wang models that you can write down, so, 
you know, if you know about Walker Wong models, you know that there's an input category to the Walker Wong model. If that input category is a quantum double, for instance, mm -hmm. an abelian quantum double, then then then, then certainly there'll be the, the Walker Wong model will be completely trivial. And I think those can be actually disentangled with finite depth circuits. Right? There's just nothing interesting about those at all. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's sort of these ones that where the input category would have a non-zero chiral central charge, for instance. Um, uh, and then there's there's other sort of open questions. There's gray areas between those, which, which we can talk about as well. Um, okay, so right, like I said, we're going to take a lattice perspective here, and we're going to we're going to think about um, uh, things in sort of in, in quantum information terms. So in particular, we're going to we're going to think about trying to disentangle these Walker Wang models. So the natural question that one can ask. Um, uh, and that you know we did ask at the beginning is uh, given one of these Walker Wong models, can the ground state of the Walker Wong model be disentangled with a finite depth circuit of local unitaries? Okay, so hopefully, how many people know what a finite depth circuit of local unitaries is? How many people don't would like a clarification? Okay, so 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 uh, so I'll, 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 I'll assume that you, you guys know what this is. Um, uh, so right, so that's sort of the natural question, um, but that's not the question that we're going to address, actually. Uh, it's an important question, um, uh, and, you know, it's something that we assume is true and better be true if these walker Wang models can be used to construct SPT phases, for instance, which have to be short-range entangled, but it's not a question that I'll address in this talk, okay? Rather, I'll, 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 uh, I'll address a, a slightly different issue, which is, um, I'll relax this finite depth circuit condition slightly. So rather than trying to look for a finite depth circuit of local unitaries, I'm going to enlarge my class of unitaries just a little bit. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, instead of looking at finite depth circuits of local unitaries, I'm going to look at unitaries that are still local in some sense. So local in the sense that they take local operators to other nearby local operators. So in other words, if you conjugate a local operator, by this, this unitary, it goes to a, a you, the, the result is a, an operator that's supported on some set of nearby sites. Um, uh, and that's true for any local operator that you act on. So this is sort of a natural uh, notion of locality preserving. And you know, certainly all finite depth circuits have this property, uh, but the converse is not necessarily true. So, so this might be a priori be a larger class of operators. And uh, if we sort of enlarge the class of operators that, the class of unitaries that we look at to just look at locality preserving unitaries, then what we will show is that not only can we disentangle the ground state, but in fact, we can sort of disentangle the entire Hamiltonian. So in other words, we can conjugate the entire uh, Hamiltonian of this walker wong model to something that's completely trivial. Think of, you know, Pauli, Sigma, Z matrices. Yeah, there's a question. So does the ground state have non-trivial topological entanglement of entropy? No. So, okay, yeah. so it's just a... Yeah, yeah, I, the, 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 uh, yeah. But it's still an interesting question to try to find this finite depth circuit of local unitaries that disentangles it. Um, uh, there's an, you know, there's there's a subtlety. Uh, uh, there's a sort of this distinction that you can make between truly uh, strictly finite range uh, uh, finite depth circuits and, and ones with tails. And so it's possible that uh, you know the, the ground state of this this, this particular Walker Wong model we'll be talking about can be disentangled, but only with tails, only with you know finite depth local unitaries with tails. Um, so that's something I'm just you know you can't rule it out. Can't can't rule it out. Um, yeah, I, I don't I won't have much to say about that. I think it's an interesting question. Um, okay, so the main sort of uh, uh, outcome of of our work is that. Um, you know, we constructed this locality preserving unitary that disentangles this non trivial Walker Wong model. And uh, because it, it um, well, well, let me get to it later, but, but essentially the punchline will be that this, this locality preserving unitary is, is, is non trivial. Uh, so, in other words, it cannot be generated locally. It's not a finite depth circuit. It's not a finite depth circuit of local unitaries. So, uh, what this shows is that there exists, at least in three dimensions, uh, and non-trivial locality preserving unitary, which is not a finite depth circuit. Um, and this is nice because um, three dimensions is actually the lowest uh, 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 dimension in which you expect such a thing. So in one dimension, as Ashman sort of alluded to, the story is sort of pretty well understood. Um, and basically the story is just that uh, modulo finite depth circuits, the only other locality preserving unitary operators are just translations or various variations on translations. Those are, those are not finite depth local circuits, but they're still locality preserving. That's all there is in 1D. That's been sort of that's been proven. Um, now, if you, in 2D, um, 
it turns out that uh, I think Matt Hastings, I'm not sure if he's posted this yet, but, but he has a, a, a preprint um, that proves that in 2D, at least in bosonic systems in 2D, there, there's also nothing non-trivial. So in other words, everything's finite, the finite depth circuit up to sort of translations and various kinds of translations, maybe in homogeneous translations, but various kinds of translations you can do in 2D. So 3D is the sort of first non-trivial dimension where you can, well, the first lowest dimension where you can expect something non-trivial. So it's nice that there is something non-trivial. So this uh, Hastings thing is for bosons. For bosons, yeah, for bosons, exactly. I'm not sure what the status is for Fermi. Okay, so um, so let's do something concrete. So here uh, is a concrete Hamiltonian. Um, uh, you know, I had an experience in Aspen this, this, this summer where where I didn't give a Hamiltonian in the beginning, and it, the talk went poorly. So I'm just I'm just uh, starting out with a, with an explicit Hamiltonian. So this this might not be you know might not convey very much intuition to you, but I do want to just sort of sketch out what what's the setting, what's the Hilbert space, what are the degrees of freedom. So we're in three dimensions, we're in a cubic lattice, degrees of freedom live on links of the cubic lattice, that's where they sit. So there's, 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 there's actually, in this model, there are two degrees of freedom per link, so two spin a half degrees of freedom per link. Um, and here's the Hamiltonian. So the Hamiltonian has two types of terms, which might be familiar if you've seen sort of uh, lattice constructions of gauge theories. They're like the vertex and plaquette terms uh, uh, that you see in gauge theories. In fact, not just like, the, the, the first term is literally the vertex term for two decoupled copies of a Z2 lattice gauge theory. You know, by Gauss's law, these things just sort of measure, measure charge of vertices. Um, the second term, BP, is kind of like a plaquette, almost looks like a plaquette term um, for, uh, for you know, two decoupled copies of Z2, Z2 gauge theory, except for these weird prefactors out here. So if, if, if it weren't, for these terms that I've, that I've circled here, um, you know, if I just had this product plus this product, this would just be a two trivial copies of Z2 lattice gauge theory. It would, in particular, have 3D, 3D uh, intrinsic topological order. There'd be nothing very special about that model. But this, these terms are what make the model non-trivial. So these terms uh, are kind of weird. So you can see they sort of refer to links, which I've labeled as O and U, which depend on a particular projection of, uh, of, of, the, of, the, of the 3D lattice down to 2D. Um, and it turns out that the effect that they have is that, uh, you know, whereas without these terms, you have two copies of Z2 lattice gauge theory, you have sort of uh, gauge charge, you have deconfined next stations of the bulk. These terms, adding in these terms, removes the, 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 the bulk uh, deconfined next station. So it turns out there's no anions in the bulk at all. Um, uh, and it gives this model a bunch of other sort of interesting, interesting properties. Unfortunately, it's kind of hard to get any intuition from just the, you know, what is this doing? Like, it's really very difficult to get any intuition just by looking at the lattice. So to discuss these properties of this model, let me give you actually a sort of coarse-grained continuum, roughly continuum uh, uh, intuition for, for, for how the ground state looks and, and, and you know, why this model has no non-trivial excitations in the bulk and also what, what its surface properties are. So the way to think about this model is as a string net model. So, so um, uh, in other words, you can think about the Hilbert space pictorially. You know, configurations in the Hilbert space, states in the Hilbert space can be labeled by eigenvalues of all the uh, uh, link operators, sigma x and tau x. So these are basically just the electric, uh, uh, electric strings. And uh, you know, there's four possibilities at each link because you have two spin a half. So there's sort of four possibilities for these eigenvalues. So there's the, the trivial possibility and three other ones, which I'll sort of graphically denote with three colors. And um, so now, uh, using this kind of graphical intuition, you know, what what is this Hamiltonian telling you? Well, the vertex term in the Hamiltonian is basically telling you that uh, uh, the configurations on which the ground state is supported form string nets. So the only junctions that are allowed are junctions where three different colors come together, trivalent junctions where three different colors co come together. In particular, uh, strings can't just end. Uh, that, well, uh, uh, that, costs, uh, that costs energy uh, with respect to the vertex term. So if you're looking at just the ground state, they're supported on these kinds of string net configurations. And um, OK, so that's, that's the vertex term in the Hamiltonian. Now, the plaquette term gives dynamics to these string configurations in ordinary, let's say, Z2 gauge theory, uh, the dynamics would be pretty simple. You know, the, the plaquette term would just make the strings fluctuate and 
the ground state would be just an equal amplitude superposition of all string net configurations. So it would sort of delocalize over all possible string net configurations. But because of this extra term that we have in our in our uh, in, in our in our lattice Hamiltonian, these these weird terms, it turns out that the effect of those terms is to introduce some signs when the strings when the, when the strings fluctuate past each other. So in particular, um, they can be encoded in these kinds of local rules for the for the ground state wave function. So the amplitude assigned to the ground state wave function uh, for some given string net configurations, which has a twist like this, is minus the amplitude for the corresponding configuration without the twist. Similarly, sort of untwisting things this way incurs a minus sign, and then these kinds of reconnection f moves you can do for free. Okay, so this is a set of local rules that determines that determines the ground state. Okay, this one might seem a little weird. This one might seem a little weird because it's 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 you know it's it's a rule that doesn't seem to be it seems to be it seems to depend on uh, the choice of projections that you you the choice of projection that you make into 2D, like this configuration is topologically the same as this configuration. That's a subtlety I don't really want to go into right now. It has to do with, um, you know, the fact that this model is really, if you want to think about it in a topologically invariant way, it's really a model of framed, uh, framed uh, uh, strings rather than just ordinary strings. But, but, you know, let me just point that out, but, you know, I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna address it much further. Um, what I do want to say is that uh, this kind of pictorial intuition for the ground state actually sort of um, allows you to draw some conclusions. In particular, um, it allows you to sort of at least give a heuristic argument that there are no deconfined x stations, no anions in the 3D bulk. And that is because, um, well, the heuristic is as follows. Um, you know, how, how could you possibly have anions in the 3D bulk? To have anions, you'd have to have some kind of a string operator. Well, the simplest kind of anion you can think of would be made by a string operator, uh, which would just sort of plop down one of these electric flux lines. Um, but you know, at least the most naive thing that you can do, you know, just just write down a string operator that literally just puts in this this this, this electric strings by acting with an appropriate set of sigma z operators on on on, on, on this, this set of links. That doesn't work. Okay, that would work in a toric code model, but it, in, in in this particular model, it doesn't work because there's always an anti-commuting plaquette operator. Uh, any other color plaquette operator will be will anti-commute with this string operator, and that's due to this first rule here. You know, to, to, to have one string move past another, you incur a minus sign. That, that minus sign leads to anti-commutation. Uh, so you have an anti-commuting plaquette operator, and the string operator doesn't, and, 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 and um, uh, so the string operator doesn't commute with, uh, 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 with all the terms of the Hamiltonian. These plaquette operators sit in the Hamiltonian. Um, and so there's some, you know, uh, 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 there's some con con confining energy for this thing. Of course, that's not a proof. That's, that's, that's a heuristic. Um, and actually, when you know when Matt and Jingwen read our, our papers on this, they're just like, <laughs> where, "Where are you getting this from?" Uh, but then you know uh, they sort of went through it very carefully. Jing Jingwen has this very nice formalism for um, uh, you know because this this Hamiltonian, this particular walk wrong model is a Pauli Hamiltonian that's translationally invariant. Jingwen has this very nice formalism that sort of allows you to actually prove things rigorously about this. Um, uh, and so sort of they went through it one by one and, and sort of proved all these statements very rigorously. Um, similarly, there's a similar heuristic, uh, which was also similarly proven rigorously by, by them, uh, for surface topological order. So, you know, as I said, there's no anions in the 3D bulk, but uh, that this argument that I gave here doesn't apply at the surface, because at the surface, you can imagine plopping down a string operator at the surface, creates excitations at the surface, and there, you can't make an anti-commuting plaquette operator because that would have to sort of come out of the uh, come out of the, the the surface, sort of have to go out into the vacuum, and that just doesn't exist. Again, this is not obvious un until you sort of write down a particular lattice model. But again, this is something that uh, that they sort of the, the the pictures that I discussed in the last three slides, you know, the pictorial representations of this model is actually can be made much more general. So this is uh, uh, this is just one particular example of a whole class of models. Uh, that, that Walker and Wong uh, wrote down, where you can sort of take any surface topological order you like as an input into the model and create a 3D model whose output is some, you know, some 3D model with a short range entangled bulk with a surface that realizes precisely that surface topological order. So this is just one particular example of this general construction. Um, but this particular surface topological order that we have here is actually very interesting. Um, you know, it's called, it's referred to, I guess, as the three fermion theory. And it's a very interesting surface topological order because, um, because uh, 
there's something funny that happens when you try to realize it purely in 2D. Okay, so the realization that we have is at the surface of a 3D short range entangled model. If you try to realize the surface topological order, this intrinsic topological order purely in 2D, um, something funny happens, which is that, okay, you can do it. Uh, there's a field, there's a Chern Simons uh, K matrix, uh, uh, you know, four component Chern Simons theory that you can, with this K matrix that, that realizes this topological order in 2D. But the funny thing that happens is that, um, you know, if you use this famous formula that relates chiral central charge to quantum dimensions and, and topological spins, you'll find that whatever possible 2D realization you can have, it definitely has a non-zero chiral central charge. The chiral central charge, whatever it is, has to be 4 mod 8, in particular, has to be non-zero. Um, and what a non-zero chiral central charge implies is that, you know, if you have a system in 2D with an edge, uh, there has to be energy uh, current at the edge uh, at finite temperature. So in particular, that means that, um, you know, energy current is expressed in terms of commutators of terms in the Hamiltonian. So in particular, what this means is basically that there's, there's no commuting projector representation of this, of this topological, of this three Fermi topological order, if you insist on living strictly in 2D, okay? So, so, so we found something kind of funny. We found the surface topological order of, uh, at the surface of a 3D commuting projector model, but yet, if you try to construct it purely in a 2D commuting projector model, uh, there's an obstruction to doing so, okay? So, this question. Is there actually a like, formal proof? No. And so, so this is what, what Matt and, and Jaguan were very hung up on. And so, in fact, if you, if you read our abstract carefully, um, what we do is we, we um, you know, the, the proof relies on this. Our, our proof that, the, the, that our locality preserving unitaries relies on this sort of physical statement. Um, if you don't want to take this physical statement, what we can prove is that either the thing we, we constructed is non-trivial, the 3D locality preserving unitary is non-trivial, or if it is trivial, then in two dimensions, in fermionic systems in two dimensions, there has to be a non-trivial locality preserving unitary. So we can talk about that later. I'll have to recall the exact, exact argument there. But, but there's something non-trivial. We can definitely prove that there's something non some non-trivial locality preserving unitary, even without relying on the statement. Okay, so, right, so, um, so now let me make an analogy. So, so this, this, this thing that we just noticed, this three fermion theory can be realized at the surface of 3D commuting projector model, but not strictly in 2D commuting projectors. This kind of um, is very reminiscent of um, sort of maybe, maybe a better known story uh, uh, with, which involves global symmetries and tooth anomalies, okay? So there's, there's sort of this, uh, uh, this, this, this story that, you know, if you try to uh, look at, I guess the term is symmetry enriched uh, uh, topological order. So in other words, if you try to look at two dimensional systems with some intrinsic topological order and global symmetries, there are certain actions of the global symmetry on the anions that you can think about in terms of, you know, the projective representations that, that, that of the symmetry that the anions carry, fractional charges and all that. There are certain sort of symmetry assignments which, which seem completely legitimate yet cannot be realized in any 2D lattice models with the symmetry acting on site. Okay, so there's some global symmetry acting on site, and uh, you know something that looks okay in the continuum, some assignment of symmetry, fractional symmetry quantum numbers that looks okay in the continuum, just doesn't cannot be realized by a lattice model uh, uh, in, in, in purely in 2D. However, it can be realized at the surface of a 3D lattice Hamiltonian, which is short range entangled, which does have this on site uh, 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 symmetry symmetry G. Um, uh, so. Uh, so that's sort of a well-known story, and this is actually a way of constructing non-trivial 3D symmetry protected topological phases uh, with, with, with surface topological order. Um, and what I want to point out is that the story we have here is kind of analogous. It's just you have to replace the words, you know, commuting with on-site symmetry G with uh, commuting with themselves. So in other words, this three fermion theory, we know we cannot be, it cannot be realized by any 2D uh, uh, gapped Hamiltonian where the where the terms of the Hamiltonian commute with themselves rather than commuting with the symmetry. However, we find that it can be realized at the surface of this walker wong model where this, the, 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 the terms in this walker wong model do commute with themselves. In other words, do form a commuting projector. Um, so, 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 so there's some kind of analogy there. So the question is, you know, what, what's, what's the conclusion? What, you know, in, in the case with symmetry, we, we know that the 3D model is a non-trivial uh, SPT, non-trivial symmetry projected topological phase. Well, in, this, in this case, with the three fermion theory, what do we know? Um, well, so the natural conclusion to make is that 
The Walker Wong model is trivial as a gap Hamiltonian, so if you don't impose any, in, you know, any any conditions that terms commute or whatever, uh, but it somehow becomes non-trivial when you impose the condition that the terms commute with each other. So in other words, non-trivial in this in this, the world of commuting projector gap Hamiltonians. Um, that's somehow the, the the conclusion one would like to make. Yeah. So you, you don't you haven't said anything about time reversal. I have not said anything about time reversal. Exactly. So so right. So so. Uh, originally, the reason we studied this 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 particular Walker Wall model is uh, in the context of making beyond cohomology SPT phase of time reversal. But time reversal plays no role in this story. This is just yeah, sort of simpler in that sense. Um, so okay, so this statement, uh, nice conjecture. I don't, we can't prove any of this. Um, what we can do, however, is prove something about locality preserving unitaries and you know the thing I mentioned earlier, which conveys some of the same flavor. Okay, so let me, uh, somehow this is, this is the theme, this is sort of what, what, what I'll be talking about for the next, I guess, 20 minutes to 25 minutes gets at, but uh, you know, I'll, I'll not be proving this directly or even arguing for this directly. I'll have, I'll, 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 the, the thing that I construct somehow has a similar flavor though, so I just want you to keep this in mind. Yeah? So you're saying that if we define a simple equivalence relation for the mean, I can think that's not obvious that the existence of a local uh, unitary will apply a community for the boundary. Sir, can you, can you speak louder? I, I, I thought that if you have a local unitary which maps all projections to this problem, then it might then apply a commuting projection for the bouncing Hamilton field. If you have a, a com if you have a local unitary that maps the bulk that maps the the, the bulk of our projections to Oh yeah. But but local you mean as a finite depth local. Because you need to be able to truncate it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that, that's that's. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so, so the, the fact that the three Fermat theory cannot be realized purely in two D can be clear. I mean, we believe it's true, but okay, so that can be proved. But given that we assume that then the first row and the third row are equivalent, are they? Um, okay, so if you assume this, uh, well. Um, well, th this isn't even a statement about. Well, yeah. Let, let, let's talk later. I mean, there's. I think morally, yes, but, but there, there's some technicality. So, yeah. Um, well, let me say exactly what, what what I think can be proven. We'll get there. Um, okay. So right. So let me switch gears a little bit and, and, and introduce some you know some 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 additional terminology, um, which is the notion of a separator and a locally flippable separator. Okay, so this is kind of a souped-up version of a set of commuting projectors. It's like a set of commuting projectors with some extra, uh, extra constraints on them, extra conditions on them that make them very nice. Um, so, again, let's assume that we have some kind of a Hilbert space built on. Let's just say spin a half. So qubits means spin a halves uh, on some site J. Let's be completely general here. It's some, there's some lattice of sites. Um, so what's a separator? So a separator is some collection of operators which I call script Z J, um, which uh, is in one-to-one -one correspondence with the site. So for each site j, there's an operator zj, but that operator zj, script zj, is not supported just on j. It's supported on some set of sites nearby j. Okay, so, so I'm allowing it sort of to bleed onto the other sites up to some finite distance. Um, uh, so zj is supported on sites near j. For every site, there's an operator zj. They all commute with each other. Um, so it's sort of a commuting. You can, you can, ultimately, we'll build Hamiltonians out of this. We'll make Hamiltonians that are just sums of these zjs. Um, but but for, for a separate, all I require is that you know these terms commute with each other, and the most important condition is that um, the eigenvalues of these zjs are all just plus or minus one, so they're kind of like Pauli sigma z's. Um, but every possible set of eigenvalues is realized exactly once. Okay, so if I give you any set of eigenvalues, I want you know the first z z z one to have this eigenvalue, z two to have this eigenvalue, whatever. There's a unique state, uh, obviously up to a phase which has those eigenvalues for all these zjs. Okay, so somehow that's the notion of separator. These, this, it, applying the separator separates out all the states from each other in the Hilbert space. There's no, re, no, there's no degeneracies left. Okay. Um, so, um, yes? And they squared one? And they squared one, yeah. Well, yeah, eigenvalues are plus or minus one. Yeah. Um, and, uh, so that's, that's the notion of a separator. Now there's an additional constraint you can say, which is make the separator locally flippable. So what's a locally flippable separator? 
Well, it's just something that where you can, uh, where there exists local operators x sub j, one for every j, one for every site, which uh, flip the eigenvalue of z sub j and leave the other z sub k's alone. Okay, so I can sort of toggle all the eigenvalues. I can explore the entire Hilbert space by flipping these up. Okay, so that's a locally flippable separator. So with some examples, uh, what's, a, what's, what's an example of a separator? So if I take the toric code vertex and plaquette terms, um, well, if I take them on a torus, that's not a separator because there's a topological degeneracy on a torus. But if I sort of put this thing on a sphere, um, and if I remove one vertex and one plaquette term to get rid of redundancies, because there's some redundancies among, you know, just due to Gauss's law uh, 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 between, uh, uh, between some of these vertex terms and some of these plaquette terms, then that turns out that there is a separator. There's precisely one state for each choice of eigenvalues. Um, but it's not flippable, and it's not flippable basically because you can't make a isolated, you know, electric charge or isolated magnetic charge excitation, or magnetic flux excitation, rather. Um, so uh, another example is one D well, not the one D icing model, but just this set of terms. So imagine the Hilbert space of a one D icing model. Imagine this set of terms. Um, this set of terms all commute with each other. Uh, it turns out that this this give you a separator. There's one eigenstate for every possible choice of eigenvalues, but it's also not flippable. The way you see that is that you know, if you take one of these uh, sigma z, sigma z terms sort of in the middle of this, of this string, imagine this is a very long, uh, you know, imagine n is very large, take, take one of these sigma z, sigma z terms that's somewhere in the middle, sigma z, n over 2, n over 2 plus 1, uh, that cannot be flipped locally. You try to flip that with any sigma x, and you, you'll find that you've also flipped the neighboring term, so you have to flip that back, and, and, and basically that can only be flipped with a string operator. So that's, that's not uh, uh, locally flippable. Um, and uh, the reason that this example is important is because you know, this is kind of a silly choice of, uh, 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 of stabilizers, right? I can sort of stabilize the exact same set of states by just taking, you know, just there's just the canonical set of sigma z operators, sigma one z, sigma two z, sigma three z. You know, I don't need to make these weird combinations. I can just take, you know, the, just a set of sigma z's, and that is a locally flippable separator and has the exact same set of eigenstates. So, uh, so, so this sort of points out that there's, you know, there's often a redundancy, you know, uh, uh, and, and and there's sort of a, you know, for, for any given sort of stabilizer group, there's there's a particularly nice choice of stabilizers. Um, and that's actually, you know, the reason this is important is that's actually what happens in the Walker-Wong model. In the Walker-Wong model, if you sort of write down the naive Walker-Wong Hamiltonian terms and make them into, uh, uh, you know, you can write them in terms of Pauli operators, they sort of have this kind of property. They're, they're, they give a separator that's not locally flippable, but you can redefine terms slightly to make it locally flippable. And I'll, I'll say a little bit about, more about that in, in, in just a sec. Um, oh, wait, yeah, this is, this is precisely what I was going to say. So the, the, yeah, this, the, the, so the three Fermi and Walker-Wong model, the thing that I showed you at the, at the beginning, uh, you know, that's made out of that's made out of uh, these 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 poly stabilizers that have eigenvalues plus or minus one all commute with each other. Uh, and okay, let me say one thing, um, uh, just just to sort of highlight the the, the, the subtleties. Um, if you just take the three Fermi and Walker-Wong model. Um, it turns out that you know if you if you count all the vertex terms and all the plaquette terms, it turns out that there are, there are sort of uh, too many. There's there's there are redundancies if you want to uh, if you want to if you want to try to make a separator out of them. Somehow, um, you know, if you think about a unit cell in three dimensions, there's sort of you know six qubits per unit cell, and there's six plaquette terms and two vertex terms. So, so there's eight Hamiltonian terms, but only uh, 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 only six degrees of freedom. Um, and so uh, you, you have to sort of eliminate these redundancies, and and and, and Jengman sort of has a very nice computer code polynomial formalism that, that basically allows him to do that, uh, and uh, uh, and 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 sort of eliminate all the redundancies and and, and, and and find the separator that actually also happens to be locally flippable. Um, so uh, right, so that that's sort of the main main punchline. It's a question. So you can write on in these new variables. You can write on a Hamiltonian. That's just sums of these. Uh, what about the z's? Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. So um, uh, I mean, you don't even have to think about the new variables. You can just you know stick with the original sigma x, tau x, and yeah. you could just write down. I think the, the actually. So the set of new terms in the Hamiltonian is you keep one set of plaquette terms, like for just, you know, because there's these two, the sigma, sigmas, and taus. Mm -hmm. Keep the sigma set of plaquette terms and do a mod, make a Take the tau plaquette terms and modify them slightly, and then drop the vertex terms. 
because it turns out that then generality for a locally flippable separator. So a locally flippable separator turns out to be really nice. You know, remember, locally flippable separator means you have these script Zs, and then you have these script Xs that uh, sort of selectively anti-commute with the script Zs, and they allow you to toggle all the script Z eigenvalues. But it turns out that whenever you have that, you can always sort of, if necessary, readjust your, your definition of these script Xs to make them all commute with each other. Okay, that's actually not very difficult to do, and then you can do that in general for any locally flippable separator. So, uh, so, so it turns out that this, so now if you sort of write down all the properties of locally flippable separator, including this, then this is very nice. This is literally just the commutation properties of, of the, the, the Pauli algebra, right? Just all the, everything commutes except script, G, uh, script X anti-commutes with script Z when acting on the same site. That, that's it. So, so what this means uh, is that there's an, you know, what this means is that you can define an automorphism, in other words, a map, uh, an invertible one to one map of the of the operator algebra of the system of qubits, which takes just the ordinary x z Pauli operators uh, to these script x and script z respectively okay and so what that what that means whenever you have an automorphism of an operator algebra uh, uh, like that, what that means is that there exists uh, some locality preserving so, so there exists some unitary operator u and in fact it 's fixed up to phase. Uh, which, when you conjugate, you know, the, the script operators gives you the unscripted operator. So that's just a general fact about uh, 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 automorphisms of these kind of full matrix operator algebras. They're, they're always can be implemented by some unitary operator U. I think in math this has some kind of a name, like Stone von Neumann theorem or something like this. But, but, but you know, it physically it's just, it makes sense. If you can define the action of this operator at the level of, you know, what it does to local operators, then, you know, then, then you're done, basically as long as it's consistent and preserves all the commutation relations. Okay, so this is, this is the logic. This is, this is the logic that we apply to our <coughs> one-to-one model. We have a locally flippable separator, hence we have this locality preserving unitary that this entangles with. Um, okay, and this I had, I guess I, I, I could have put this slide earlier. This is, this is sort of, uh, you know, just, just, just to remind you the notion of locality preserving. Locality preserving is if, if, uh, 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 if you know, you conjugate a lo any local, Conjugating any local operator gives you a, a, a nearby local operator. Um, and so, right, so now, um, uh, so l let me get to the, the, the main punchline, which is that, you know, so we've constructed a locality preserving operator, and the main punchline is that this locality preserving operator is not a finite depth circuit. It's not a finite depth circuit of local unitaries. Um, so, you know, how do we see that? So, so this, is, this is, I guess, uh, probably 10 more minutes. Um, it's, it's a proof by contradiction. So, so I'm going to give you a proof by contradiction, including the sort of physical assumption that I mentioned is going to be, well, assume for a contradiction that it is a finite depth circuit. Okay, so finite depth circuit looks something like this. Um, let's try to derive a contradiction. So, uh, right. So, um, oh, let me skip this. I, I mentioned this. So, assume that the, this thing is, is a finite depth circuit. So, so I have my, uh, these, these are, this is my walk along model. These are um, uh, uh, these are these are my you know, this is my sort of modified Walker Long Hamiltonian. So these are the, the the separator terms, and I'm claiming that you know even though we found a locality preserving unitary U that takes these terms to to, to ordinary sigma Z's, that U cannot be a finite depth circuit. And so, how do we prove that? Well, assume for for a contradiction that it is a finite depth circuit, and then the key is going to be that if it is a finite depth circuit, it can be truncated. Okay, so what does it mean to truncate a finite depth circuit? Truncating a finite depth circuit is the one thing that you can do to a finite depth circuit that you cannot, in general, do to a locality preserving unitary. So how do you truncate? What do I mean by truncate? What I mean by truncate is like, you know, if I have a finite depth circuit that acts everywhere, you know, in my whole space, does everything, uh, now suppose that I only want to act with it on half the space, you know, let's say all the qubits to the left of this plane, uh, uh, I have to be able to truncate it somehow, and I have to make sure that the truncate, uh, the, that, 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 you know, obviously I know what, what happens to the operators very far left of the plane and very far right of the plane, but I have to consistently, you know, choose, choose, a, choose a, uh, an action of this unitary at, at, the, at the plane, like what happens when, 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 when you transition over from acting to not acting. Uh, and the point is that for a finite depth circuit, this is always possible. There's always something you can do. Okay, so for a finite depth circuit, if this red line sort of represents the, the, the plane that I've been talking about and I want to keep just the terms to the left of this red line, 
you know, then basically I just throw out all the gates that um, I throw out all the gates that uh, uh, are not supported to the left of this red line. So I just keep only the gates that are supported to the left here, and just throw out all these gates in this climb circuit. So basically, I just get the identity to the right of this red line. Nothing happens to the qubits to the right. And then there's some fuzzy <coughs> region in between where you know my action of the truncated operator doesn't agree with my action of the original unitary. Okay, who cares? Um, deep, very far to the left of this of this of this red line. Uh, you know, the action of this truncated unitary is the same as the action of the original unitary. So this is what I mean by truncatable. So if I had this finite depth unitary, it would be truncatable. And so what I want to do then to get my contradiction is I want to truncate my unitary as follows. So a priori, my unitary acts on all of space. Okay, this, this model imagined being a defined on an infinite lattice. And now what I want to do is I want to truncate it to some, its action to some finite region. Okay, and so... Uh, and so where, 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 where do I want to apply this, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know what, what kind of physical setup do I want to apply this to? What I want to imagine is that I have my Hamiltonian now, my Walker-Wong Hamiltonian, where, you know, this, 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 this region is the bulk of the Hamiltonian. So, so where I'm applying my, my, my truncated operator, the terms in here are just the terms of the bulk Hamiltonian. But out here, I have a Hamiltonian with a surface, and the surface realizes this uh, three fermion uh, topological order. Okay, so basically, I have, you know, I have my system with a surface realizing my three fermion topological order. It's a commuting projector, and now I'm just going to hit the bulk of this thing with this truncated uh, disentangler, this locality preserving unitary. And what this what this locality preserving unitary does is it sort of completely destroys the Hamiltonian in here. It just takes the, the Walker Wong Hamilton here into a trivial Hamiltonian that you know is just the sum of sigma z's basically sum of sum of completely trivial terms that stabilize a trivial product state. Okay? And so now I'm gonna get a contradiction because then I can just drop this bulk. This bulk is gone. Okay? Just throw away the sigma z's, throw away the 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 you know the, the qubits on which they act and just keep this effectively 2D 2D plane and this this effectively 2D plane uh, is now still a commuting projector model because you know I've conjugated by you know I've had a, I started with a commuting projector model I've conjugated by unitary so everything still commutes um, uh, and it still realizes the three fermion topological order because that only relies on sort of string operators which are defined near the surface I haven't touched those at all um, and so so now so now that's a contradiction at least if you believe this sort of physical assumption that I made about the chiral central charge. It's a contradiction because we would have a 2D commuting projector realization of a 3 fermion topological order, which would have to have a thermal Hall response. In other words, now the model is purely 2D, we could, we could truncate it and make an edge and, and see that you know, there's no way we could get a, a, a thermal Hall response, which would, be, which would be a contradiction. Again, it would be nice to have an actual formal tool for this. Uh, we don't have that, but... Um, okay, good. So... Um, uh, so that, that's all I really wanted to say, but let me, let, me, let me mention sort of some of the conclusions and some of the open directions. Um, so, uh, so, right, so the conclusion is that, you know, this three Fermi and Walker Wong model can be really rewritten as a, as a, as a Hamiltonian that's sort of trivial in pretty much every way that you can expect. It's, it's, it's you know, not only does it, does, is, the, is the ground state non-degenerate, but every excited state is non-degenerate. It's a locally flippable separator. You know, I can sort of make excitations of this, this of, of, of this Hamiltonian at will, and in fact, um, you know, we, we tested this. I think after you asked us a question at the Simon Center, um, this can be made completely. You know, if you if you now want to ask about time reversal, this can be made completely time reversal invariant. So, so in other words, all the terms in the Hamiltonian can be made completely time reversal invariant. So, this is, this, this, yeah, it's 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 a. Uh, 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 yeah, that's right. So, so all the terms in the Hamiltonian can be made completely time reversal invariant, and the locality preserving unitary. This U is also completely time reversal invariant. So, um, uh, right. Uh, now, right. So the main thing we showed is that if you now uh, look at the corresponding locality preserving unitary operator that sort of disentangles that Hamiltonian into sort of a trivial product form, uh, it's it cannot be a finite depth circuit. Um, so now, what are the open questions? Well, basically everything. Um, you know, is there, okay, so the basic question would be, you know, whenever you find something that's non-trivial, like a non-trivial locality preserving unitary, the natural question is, is there some quantized index or some quantized number or something that you can compute 
you know, if I, if I hand you a locality preserving unitary U and I tell you how it acts on all the local operators, is there something from, from that can you, can you tell it's non-trivial just by looking at the way that it acts on the operators? There's some index you can compute, something like that. Um, so somehow the intuition would be that U, what it does is it, it somehow pumps this 3 4 on top logical order, so maybe it pumps chirality or pumps a 2D phase with the thermal hall response. I don't know, all these are just sort of uh, random words. But, 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 but the question is, you know, really, how do you define an index for you? There really should be some way of defining this index, and, and we, have, we haven't been able to find that. Um, the other open question is, you know, this, this, this doesn't actually shed light on whether uh, the ground state, if I just don't care about the Hamiltonian, the full Hamiltonian, but I just all I care is about the ground state. Can I disentangle that with a finite depth circuit? This doesn't prove one way or the other whether you can do that or not. We assume that you can, uh, you know, presumably you can, uh, uh, possibly with, you know, the, they, they might have to have these exponentially or other, otherwise decaying tails. Um, uh, but again, this is this is this is an open question. Um, uh, you know, as I said, the, this Walker Wong model, we use it for constructing uh, beyond, this should not be super cohomology, this should just be beyond cohomology, uh, SPT phases. Uh, so the question is, you know, are there any implications of this, you know, this, the, the, the existence of this locality preserving unitary for, for those beyond cohomology SPT phases, maybe, you know, the way that they differ from ordinary uh, cohomology SPT phases. Um, and then finally, uh, you know, this, uh, um, uh, you know, finally, there's, there's a question about uh, 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 is there some analog of this effect in systems with, uh, with, with some extra structure, in particular a U1 global symmetry. So somehow, um, uh, you know, the thing that sort of made this whole story run was this idea of thermal Hall response and, and quantized thermal Hall response in 2D. Um, and that's sort of, you know, that, that's a, a better understood response in 2D better than thermal Hall response is just ordinary quantized Hall response, uh, which relies on having a U1 symmetry. And so, you know, the natural question is, can, can you sort of, you, if, you, if you now include U1 symmetry, is there some U1 analog of this entire story? Uh, uh, you know, so the, 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 the natural thing that you might hope to construct is some kind of a locality preserving unitary operator that preserves U1 and is a finite depth circuit, but the gates in this finite depth circuit cannot all be made U1 symmetric. So that, that would be, I don't know, that would be a natural conjecture. And somehow this thing would, would pump ordinary uh, 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 Hall conductance rather than thermal Hall conductance. I don't know. Um, and there, there's probably a bunch of other, other open questions. I think, you know, we just, we just, we just um, looked at one particular model. You can ask, you know, similar questions about other Walker Wong models, those other Walker Wong models are not exactly stabilizers anymore, so you sort of have, you can't quite use this stabilizer, probably stabilizer technology, but there's still, I think, a lot of, a lot of open questions about the existence of these, these locality preserving unitaries, and, and so that I'd be happy to talk about them later. Okay, thanks for your attention. Yes? Can I think like a topological superconductor, just like, like a non-interrupting one? Okay. There something right. Um, so there's no commuting projector model for that, though. Oh. Um, well, or at least the na naive model, pre Fermian model, you can write down is not commuting projector. Uh, but yeah, this is something we think about. I mean, um, I mean, okay. A question you can ask is, okay, for fermions. I mean, I, I think the answer to this is no. But but uh, you know, is there a locality preserving unitary just at the level of free fermions? Just takes you know free fermion operators to free fermion operators. That's not a finite depth circuit. Uh, I think the answer is no, but uh, I'm not 100% sure. So I think yeah, there's still stuff to be understood at the level of uh, at the level of at the level of just free fermions. You know how how does how this for bosons you can ask you can't ask these questions, but for fermions you can sort of ask you know how how these various things just intersect with sort of what we know about free fermions. And I think we understand that, but not maybe completely. I think there might still be some open things just at the level. Of free, or it would be nice to have. To sort of nail down the free fermion story first, and then you know maybe maybe go to commuting, maybe go to interacting. So suppose I just uh, disentangle just the bulk. Yes. Like, is it clear that it's still a commuting projector? Like the terms near, oh. near the cut. Yeah, because I mean, so so you know, it, it's just some unitary that you're conjugating by, even though it's it's um, 
been truncated. So near the cut, you have some terms, and they're sort of partly affected by this unitary operator. But you know, if I have two of them, they commuted before. They've all effectively they've just been conjugated by some unitary operator, so they still commute. This unitary operator is weird; it's been truncated, but it's still unitary. It still preserves locality. But so, I mean, like the terms near the cut versus with, with the terms near, like far from the cut, will they still um, Yeah. Again, I mean, it, it, it's 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 a. Uh, I think all you need is just uh, the fact that it's a unitary operator. I mean, commutation relations, you can just take, take your commutation relation, A, B equals B, A, and just conjugate it by, by U. And then you'll see that the conjugated operators all commute. Yeah, unitaries are nice in that way. Everything stays preserved sort of spectral properties. Yeah? Um, so you mentioned you have to modify the separator for the Wolf model. Correct. So the original separator, therefore, is kind of more not to the right because it's not yeah, so the original thing is um, not even a separator because there's redundancies. There's too many. I have too many terms in the Hamiltonian. They're sort of, you know, per unit cell. So a unit cell of this Walker Wong model has six qubits because it sort of has one, two, three links, and there's two qubits per link. Um, so per unit cell, there are six qubits, six degrees of freedom, but there are actually eight Hamiltonian terms because there's, uh, you know, sort of three plaquettes, two, two, ter two plaquettes, Terms per per plaquette, um, and then there's the two vertex terms. So that doesn't look like a very central description. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, um, I mean, to to find a separator, you first have to find some non-redundant set of terms. So, so it, 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 naively you'd say, oh, let's just drop the vertex terms. But but um, then why does why does the term have to be to size specifically? Why does what? I mean, the position is the number of sides. Well, I mean, the, the universal thing would be sort of total number of terms of the Hamiltonian or separator divided by total number of degrees of freedom, number of qubits. So I want that number to be 1. Right? Well, anyway, but, so I, you, I wanted to find a, in the old phase, for example, by inserting projectors, uh, that should still be okay if I use the original one, right? Um, yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah, that, that yeah. And yeah. this is kind of distinct to the phase from the That's right. Um Well let's see, I mean both the original Walker Wong Hamiltonian terms and the new ones generate the same stable the same stabilizer group. Um but can you put the eigenstates in one to one correspondence? Yeah, yeah, the eigenstates, they have the same set of eigenstates as well. Uh, I can write, yeah, that's right. I can write, uh, I can write the original Walker Wong Hamiltonian terms. Each, each one of the original Walker Wong Hamiltonian terms is some product of the new terms and vice versa. So, uh, so I don't know, I mean, I, I don't know what that implies for, I mean, it seems like they're sort of the same MBL phase. It's, it's, yeah. I mean, I, I think, yeah. The original Walker Long Hamiltonian is maybe just not that useful for anything. It's just, it's, it's useful because it's sort of uh, nicely obtained from this sort of continuum picture of strengths fluctuating. But really, um, sort of the minimal non redundant thing that you should be working with is this modified one, which, by the way, is extremely complicated. I mean, it's, it's like, you know, I've, I saw a mathematical printout. It's like terms are supported on like five by five by five qubits. Like, it's, it's just some really nasty thing, which, yeah. I mean, Jingwan has a code for this, which just lets him get this. And I didn't, I didn't believe it when he, when he showed it at first. Like, this is no way. Like, it's got to be some mistake. But no, it's, it's, it seems legit. You know about other Wolkowine models? Is there? No, we don't. So we're, we're thinking about that right now. Um, uh, you know, one natural thing to look at would be sort of simple abelian bosonic orders like. Um, this uh, this thing with Z three fusion rules, the bosonic two thirds state, the you know, K matrix two one one two theory. Uh, this, is sort of, uh, this thing is non zero chirality. Um, what about just semion? Uh, yes, yeah, so semion is actually harder. Um, semion is harder if you. Uh, uh, Basically, because this involves the number three and semion involves number two, number two is harder to deal with for, for Jangwan when, when there's because really uh, 
you know, things are harder in characteristic two than characteristic three in, in, in math. Um, and, and uh, you know, for walk along it worked out fine, but semion is not a stabilizer model. There's sort of factors of I floating around, which make it more difficult. What for the stabilizer? What was that? What is the for the stabilizer? It, it can be written just in, you know, stabilizer model means each Hamiltonian term is just in terms of how x's and z's. Um, for the semion model, you, 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 it doesn't work like that. Um, so if you want to sort of shoehorn it into this framework, you'd have to work with not qubits, but somehow four-dimensional sites, I think. Uh, whereas this, this kind of thing, so this is a Z3 topological order. So the Walker Wong model you built on this naturally has sort of uh, three-dimensional site degrees of freedom. And that actually is simpler. That, that's simpler than like trying to figure out these factors of two and square roots. That's just like qubits instead of qubits. And there's a natural generalization of Pauli operators. And there's these shifts and, and sort of phases, phase operators. So this, I think, is the most natural thing to, to go after next. Um, this thing also, and then another related thing would be to maybe get, get some more intuition for this thing. Um, you know, because like all we have is Gen 1 sort of computer code, um, is to do a layer construction based on this. You can sort of do a layer construction where you take quantum doubles of this kind of thing and then sort of tunnel various uh, charges and, and fluxes between the, the layers to, to, to construct these phases. So maybe in that context, uh, this, this locality preserving unitary somehow has can get more intuition for it. Um, then obviously for fermions, it would be nice to do something. But... Non-abelian could be another class. Non-abelian would be another class that also uh, is very difficult from the point of view of stabilizers. And you know, because non-abelian, there's there's degeneracies in excited states, and so this notion of separator, where you really try to separate everything out, uh, just becomes things become more difficult. Um, of course, in the bulk, there are no. You can find excitations, so maybe it's okay. But uh, yeah, it's naively it's hard to sort of see how to how to do things. Um, I don't worry too much about these separators and stuff like that. If I just think of two uh, D models that I cannot write, there's a, definitely an obstruction to writing commuter commuting projectors. Mm -hmm. Sounds like those are the ones that have edge states, which I cannot. Uh, yeah, except that there's some. Right. Yeah, that's right. Those are the ones that have actually. Yeah, exactly. So, of course, if it's chiral, they have parallel states. Yes. But they're also non chiral ones. Yeah, exactly. So, that's an interesting class of models. The ones that don't have a chiral central charge, but are still non trivial. There's, there's, these, there's these examples. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Is, so there a class, is there some way to classify that? If, is it... For abelian theories, is this, is this weight group or whatever? Right? Mm -hmm. uh, so, I think it's understood. It forms a group. So the... yeah, well, if you sort of quotient out. By phases that, that are quantum yes. doubles, then then mm -hmm. sort of yeah, it's, it forms a nice it forms a group. But uh, but yeah, you can ask you know, okay, let's build a Walker Wong model based on one of these things. Uh, so it may be the classification of U is in one to one correspondence with those. Could be, things. yeah, it could be, yeah, but yeah, exactly. So so I think it would be nice to try to investigate a Walker Wong model based on one of these things. It doesn't have parallelity, but still has edge states. <laughs> And see what that means. So, so for quantum double, at least for toric code, you can sort of convince yourself that you can write down a thing that just uh, uh, you know completely disentangles the Hamiltonian, finite mm -hmm. depth, mm -hmm. particularly the ground state. So there, the ground state can be, and the Hamiltonian can be disentangled in finite depth. Mm -hmm. For these ones, it's not clear. It would be good to investigate. Actually, Lucas is going to be around for the whole week, so and he's sitting not here but uh, in landing third floor. So if anyone's interested in talking to him, feel free.